Hello, afternoon. I'm Sue, temporarily in the chair for Bill Buckley, who is at the Eurovision Song Contest in Stockholm. And we will be hearing from him uh, in just a little while because we're starting our celebration of the biggest party in Europe, which this year is taking place in Sweden tomorrow night. It's Eurovision 2016, the 61st uh, competition. Joe and Jake, well, they're carrying the hopes of the United Kingdom on their young shoulders but you might not remember that they had to beat off competition from five other acts to become the UK entry back in February and one of those who wanted the gig was Carl William Lund a singer-songwriter who's based in South London with his song Miracle good is that? It lets you actually know just how high the standard was of those acts fighting to represent Britain at Eurovision. Well, we can catch up with Carl now to find out how the whole experience was uh, for you. What does it feel like, Carl, to listen to that song again? Hi, Sue. Um, it's a very surreal moment hearing that song being played on radio because uh, it's a very personal song. And I started writing it a couple of years ago and I can't quite believe where 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 I am at the moment and the journey that song has gone on. It's it's incredible just to hear it played on the radio. It really is. Wow, well, it was a fantastic song. The standard was really really high this year. Why did you want the gig? Why did you want to go to Eurovision? Because it is a bit of a poison chalice in many ways, isn't it? It is, but the opportunity of hearing that song and performing in front of a global audience of 200 million people couldn't really <laughs> turn that down. <laughs> um, and I found out that this year was the BBC sort of biggest song search. I mean, they were accepting submissions from BAFTA, from the BBC sort of established songwriters, and also the public submission mm. in which they invited the UK fan club, the OGAE, to listen to all the public submissions and to select their favourite to be one of the six entries which ended up being my song Miracle. So to even just to get to that stage, I was so blown away that I thought of competition from, I think, over 300 entries. Um, that just that meant the world to me, it really did. Yeah, when you rattle off statistics like that, you realise just how popular Eurovision is and the yeah. chance to perform on a stage like that with the eyes. And this year, of course, the eyes of America are on it yeah. as well. Aren't they screening yes. it for the first time? They are. They're screening it for the first time, and it was confirmed a few days ago that Justin Timberlake will be performing at the uh, after. Well, while people are voting tomorrow night, so that should be very exciting for everyone there in Stockholm. Absolutely. So, um, just back back to you for a, a minute, uh, Carl, sure. before we talk about your Eurovision generally. So, has this helped your your career? You're a singer songwriter, obviously yeah. crafting all the time your music. Has the experience of being one of the finalists helped you? Absolutely. I mean, I've got to this point without any management, without a PR team. It's just been me and my own studio and me working away on, at late nights on, on all of my songs. And um, this opportunity was that sort of next step up that I needed. And it allowed me to reach a platform of people all over the world. You know, I still get messages every single day. It's so nice, so nice to wake up to messages and emails from people from not just Europe, but from on the other side of the world who said, you know, I really love Miracle and now I've discovered your own songs and this song and these lyrics helped me through this time. And that's, that's what you really want as a, as a songwriter to be able to touch people in a universal way. And, you know, especially with the song that started off as your own experience. Um, so, and, and, and I'm currently, I'm currently, um, releasing my new album which has been crowdfunded and everyone who's pledged for that crowdfund campaign i think all of them so far have been eurovision fans or oh. people that have found me based on the eurovision experience so it's such a beautiful heartwarming and really passionate fan community that i'm so glad that i was i am part of it's extraordinary you just said there that you you raised the money for this album by crowdfunding that yeah. that's an extraordinary way to go about it but you are far from alone it's becoming more and more popular isn't it it was your only option i wouldn't say it was my only option um but because i am very independent and i kind of know what my sound and what my image is i wanted to go down this route because 
you know, the music industry the way it is at the moment, there's not a great deal of money in it. The record advances on what they used to be, record deals on what they used to be. Um, artists are being forced to be tied into what we call a 360 deal where the management or the label will take a cut of literally every part of their, their creativity, whether it's the songwriting, the concerts, the memorabilia. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think I think that's a bit sad, really, because because these, especially the performers in the likes of reality TV shows that are very young, who see them shows as that their only opportunity to to fame or to to making money from music whatever it is they want they need to realize that there's so much there's so many other ways out there to make a living from music mm. and and so many ways to get your your songs out there yes we've got youtube and yes there's a lot of competition because people can just put on the webcam and sing and, and perform and in the living room but but upload it yeah yeah, but Pledge Music, which is the pr- the crowdfunding campaign I've gone with, um, are really are doing amazing things and really innovative things for independent songwriters like me to get seen and to get heard and also to raise the funds that they need to get their music out there. And, and talking about being seen and being heard, I mean, hey, that show back in February was watched, uh, to, you know, the, the finals for the Eurovision, Britain's Eurovision Act was watched, yeah. uh, widely watched. How was it as an experience, Carl? Was it terrifying or was it fun? <laughs> it, was, it was a bit terrifying. I don't usually get nervous, but I was pretty nervous on that night. Mm. Um, it was the first time I'd sung live on TV. <gasps> uh, there was a, yeah, there was one or two few sound issues which kind of happened just before I was about to go live with my track um you don't but, need that no no but i really i really fed off the passion of the audience and i could hear people singing my lyrics back to me which was just crazy because the song had been had been out for, for only four days before so people like i said that, that fan community are so passionate and they really do get behind you it was so nice to to, to hear Fantastic. Look, can you hang on with us for just yeah. a little minute? We're going to pause to listen to the Eurythmics uh, and Thorn in my side on BBC Radio Berkshire. But a little bit more from Carl on this year's Eurovision and what he reckons to our chances. After this, BBC Radio Berkshire playing the Eurythmics, who, to my knowledge, have never appeared at the Eurovision Song Contest and probably aren't likely to. We are celebrating uh, that very great singing contest uh, this afternoon. The day ahead of uh, it tomorrow night, it's in Stockholm uh, tomorrow evening. Joe and Jake, they're carrying the hopes of the United Kingdom on their young shoulders. Bill Buckley, in whose chair I am sitting this afternoon, is also there and we're going to be catching up with all the gossip from him. But my guest now is Carl William Lund, who came within a hair's whisker of representing Britain this year. You just missed out to Joe and Jake, Carl. So will you be watching tomorrow night? Oh, absolutely. I've been watching the semi-finals all week and I'll be live tweeting tomorrow. And, you know, I, I really am going to get behind Joe and Jake because they're genuinely lovely guys. And I was really impressed by their work ethic because even though the two young guys, they were, they, they're really disciplined and during the national final, they were rehearsing every moment they could get, practicing the harmonies. They didn't even touch a drop of alcohol even afterwards. So I just thought, fair play to them. They really do deserve it, and I I wish them all the best. I really do. So you've been watching the semi-finals. There's been some shocking news this year, hasn't there? Um, You know... uh, No Scandinavian countries. I mean, Sweden, obviously, they're there because they're hosting it. But Norway won not that long ago with a brilliant song. It's an extraordinary turn up for the books, that, isn't it? Absolutely, and you know, there's a lot of Scandinavian songwriters out there that have absolutely brilliant music, and they've had a really strong record in the competition. And that, it is a bit of a shame, but there's been there's been quite a few upsets this year. Um, during the first semi-final, I think the biggest shock was Iceland not qualifying when they had one of the the, the strongest performances and songs um, from from every entry this year. So there's been a few a few upsets. Um, Ireland are out as well, aren't they? Yeah, Nicky Byrne. Oh, it's, <laughs> Bless ext- them. it's extraordinary. I mean, Ireland have won it so many times, and then yeah, they didn't even qualify for the final this year. It's it's not about the music, though, is it? Surely, when decisions like that are being taken, it's very political business. It is. I do agree with that partly. Um, however, as techn- technology has gone on, it's even more so about the staging and the performance. You know, last night was was a perfect example. There were some absolutely beautiful visuals, really innovative staging uh, staging techniques. But ultimately, I mean, I'm a less is more kind of guy, and I really love 
a singer on stage performing a song, which is why I really, I'm really behind the likes of Australia, Malta, Poland's entry this year. It's all about the singer and the song and, and being in the moment with that, with that performance. Um, and I think a few entries this year are relying a little bit too much on the staging and, and on the visuals to carry the performance through. And I think in terms of basing your votes, I think people, in my opinion, should base, base their votes on the strength of the song and the singer. Now, Carl, I watched the documentary last night, Eurovision at 60, so it was obviously made for last year's competition. But yeah. Katrina and the Waves, who was our last winner, she yeah. made the point that Eurovision gets a bit grumpy with Britain because we never put up our big hitters. And she was saying that if we put up Chris Martin and Coldplay, we'd walk it. Why don't <laughs> we do that? I don't know. It's a very good question. And I was speaking to this about um, with, with, with Hugh Goldsmith, who was part of... It's windy it's there, isn't it? Uh... You no, know, I'm, I'm on a farm at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's breezy. I live, yeah, I live, I live just outside Canary Wharf, but I'm right by a farm, so I thought I'd have a little stroll as I talk to you. Oh, it's lovely, <laughs> it's lovely. No, that's great. We can hear you again now. So, yeah, oh, why don't we put a big, our biggest hitters out there on the European stage? Um, I think the way that the UK has performed over the last 10 years, I think people who are very established in the music industry kind of see that as a bit of a... A bit of a risk. You mentioned earlier about your vision being slightly a poison chalice and performers only being known for that, that year that he performed on your vision, which I can kind of agree with. But I think Hugh Goldsmith, who is part of the Finding the Six Songs this year, he said that this year was a big step in the right direction to re establishing in the minds of the UK public how important your vision is and how much the UK can shine. And, you know, we, we've been seen as a bit of a joke after the past few years, mainly because of where we've come on, on, on the scoreboard. But I think this uh, it's going to take a few more years, I think, to kind of get into the minds of not just the UK, but the, the, the rest of Europe, that we are really serious about this. And the, the fact that we had a, a UK national final this year for the first time in oh, qu mm. quite a while. Yes. I think, I, think we're, I think we're going in the right direction, definitely. Because it, it is a fantastic way for people like yourself to get launched onto a much bigger stage isn't it yeah. i mean you, yeah. you've enjoyed singing live on tv for the first time yeah i mean and, and i think it's it's not always down to a big name if you look at the likes of Engelbert humperdinck and bonnie tyler who's represented those the past few years they've they've come in not very i think i think Engelbert came second to last or yes he did yeah and i so, thought he was a surefire because he's huge in europe isn't he absolutely yeah, yeah. I, th I think i think people get behind an unknown name and a great song and I, I really hope the UK can continue to do U UK national finals because it allows people to have their say. I think people were a little mm. bit shocked last year when the BBC just announced their act and uh, yes. it didn't go down very well. No, um, we yeah, like but... the pre-competition. Would you ever give it a go again, Carl, having been through the start of the circus? Well, I can't say too much, but I will be taking some part in next year's. Ooh. Um, yeah. Go on, uh, give bit, me an exclusive. A bit of exclusive. <laughs> uh, I will be submitting a song. It might not necessarily be for the UK, though. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> you're going to help Ireland? <laughs> well, that's Ireland. all I can say at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. So has it already been selected and chosen, Carl? No, no, not yet. I'm still in the process of finishing the song. Um, as a songwriter, I've got a huge catalogue of songs there and with, with this opportunity, I, just, I sort of scanned through what I had already and Miracle just jumped out to me. But for the next year's competition, I'll be writing something new um, and I'm, I'm working on it already. <laughs> oh, you've really excited me now. I'm curious, <laughs> curious. Carl, a real pleasure to talk to you. I wish you continued success with your music career and take care. It's been a pleasure talking to you this afternoon. And let's uh, listen together now to one of my favourite Eurovision uh, winners. I think it was Britain's first back in 1967. I was two. This is Sandy Shaw, Puppet on a String. Thank you. 